who says he's going to say something calm. We are blessed. <laughs> now, those are the six magic words that Diane Ron have lived with for 50 years. And I've lived with for about 12 of them. 50 years. And they said it would never last, right? This is a very tough job for me tonight. As you know, I'm a South African, and South Africa has been competing with Australia on the sports fields. I'm in Memorial. And I want you guys to fill in the blanks, but basically, Australia has the third best rugby team <laughs> and the second best cricket team. Rainer is here, she's a 
She's a dog lover. She's a great English and communications expert. Ilona and Jacques Cornfield come from Turkey. <clears throat> Ilona is also a dog lover. She's an excessive gift giver. And she's an outstanding organizer of tours. If ever you want to go to Istanbul or Ankara, she's the person to call. I wouldn't do it for a couple of years. <laughs> Her husband, Jacques, is a highly intellectual physics professor. He's also an expert on chocolate and on coffee. <laughs> Hans and Eliana Kolstorff come from Mexico. I don't know how the hell they got into the country because we got a wall, but somehow they managed to get in. Hans is a Mexican global engineer with a lot of interests worldwide. And Eliana is a sculpturist, but she's also a world famous and a champion horse rider. Ron, of course, you know, he's our legal historian. And die, I don't have to tell you, is our strict disciplinarian. <laughs> the one thing you don't want to do is consider something which may not be exactly as planned, because she wrote the Constitution and she stands up and said, This is not in the Constitution. <laughs> so, who are we missing? We're missing uh, Rafi and Minda Garcia. Rafi is not well at the moment. He's a major supporter of charities. He also sidelines the nightclub singer. Unfortunately, he's not here, so I had to deputize to your loss. Uh, Minda is a doting grandmother. She's also a shopper deluxe, and she is the chairperson uh, of Suroptimus, which is a major international charity significant position. The other couple that we're missing are Nini and Gurunda Singh. Nini is also a proud, a proud grandma. She's an Indian jewelry expert. If you ever want to go to India and buy something, she'll get it for you at the right price. <laughs> Gurunda is an outstanding businessman and a very kind, I call him the miracle man because he's been through so much and keeps on coming up after it. So I rounded off, who am I? I'm the surf who does all the work. <laughs> when you're surrounded by 13 patricians, somebody has got to actually do the work. <laughs> so let's go back to Guy the Goddess. So she's the goddess of virginity. I don't think so. <laughs> so we've got at least three examples to prove it, there may be more. So we know at least three times she's not been a virgin. <laughs> also, mistress of the hunt and controller of wild animals. Well, that works, because I talked about the three boys already, James and David and Conrad, and then Ron. So there's four wild animals that she controls. <laughs> of course, I'm sure that the six grandchildren are perfect angels and can do no wrong. Finally, let's face it, Di is always immaculately dressed. Appearance is very important to her, and then she makes it important to us because every time we have a meeting, she says, this is what you've got to wear, and you guys got all that as well.
talk about Ryan. His business career reminds me of the children's rhyme. Maybe you guys grew up with it. Rub a dub dub, three men in a tub, a butcher, a baker, a candlestick maker. <laughs> this guy's been a butcher, he's been a baker, he was a poor farmer with nothing, so I'm sure he was a candlestick maker. <laughs> I looked up Baldwin, and I thought, bald one. Maybe he's got no hair, but he's got a lot of hair. So bald one is not applicable to Ron. It actually means bold friend, which is a perfect definition of Ron. He's striving out on his own so many different endeavors, and he's been so successful in family, in law, in real estate, in energy, in farming, numerous other businesses. He also has a love of reading, economics, and politics. He studies history, so I decided I would give him a history lesson tonight about the Baldwin family. We were up in his uh, cavernous room this evening, much bigger than my room, by the way, <laughs> and I'm a guest. Uh, and he's got these beautiful photo albums, and then he's got this Family tree going back, Guy's family, the Smiths and the Chesterfields or whatever it was. And, and Ron's got his family, but you only went back like to 1800 or something. Was it? But I, so I, what, I, what I did is I went back and I, I really looked up the, the Baldwin family. I promise I'm not going to discuss a couple of the unfortunate Baldwins. <laughs> So I'm not going to talk about Roger Nash Baldwin because he was the founder of the ultra-liberal American ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, because I know Ron has a lot of trouble with a lot of the unions and a lot of those issues. I'm not going to talk about that. And I'm also not going to talk about Ruth Baldwin because she was one of the original lawbreakers in 1770 who was sent out from England on one of the first fleet boats that went to Australia. So we're not going to talk about her life. And I'm also not going to talk about the flaky actor named Baldwin. We all know he's always in trouble. He's had difficulties with his family. He's had difficulties with people he works with. He's... And I'm also not going to discuss at all the three Baldwin who are in that show. Maybe you saw, people of a certain age would know it. it's called uh, The Young and the Restless. There's three Baldwins in that, we don't want to talk about them either. So the Baldwins I do want to talk about, and these are, this is the, the, really the, the, few, the kings, the feudal kings and the royal family that came out from the Baldwin family. It's a long line, and this is where I think that Ron really gains his success. There were five King Baldwins of Jerusalem. This is around a thousand, a year of a thousand. There were nine King Baldwins of Flanders. There were five King Baldwins of Belgium. And in fact, King Baudouin, B-A-U-D-O-I-N, basically Baldwin as well, you know, during our time of Belgium. There's also Baldwin the Abbot. That's not Tony. That's... <laughs> There's Baldwin the Saint. That's not Ron. And that's not Tony either. And then there's Baldwin, the Archbishop of Canterbury. And Ron is as close to an atheist as I know, so I don't think he's the Archbishop of Canterbury. <laughs> then there was Stanley Baldwin, who was three times the Prime Minister of Great Britain, <clears throat> United Kingdom in that time. So now we understand the roots of the seeds of why Ron Baldwin is so successful. The secret source that accounts for his success. What is it? He's enthusiastic, he's optimistic, he has a great sense of humor, if you can find it. <laughs> he doesn't take himself too seriously, he reads a lot, he's always recommending books to me. I don't know if he's ever read them, but he recommends them. <laughs> he's a thinker, and he's a doer. And he's stirred on by his life make dying. Uh, as master investor Warren Buffett says, and I've been to quite a lot of his meetings in Omaha, Nebraska, and it's a great experience. Uh, he has them every year. He says, marry a person with solid ethical values will 
will raise the quality of your life. And I really think that that is a contributing factor to both of their successes. He also says, and I think this applies to Luke too, that one of the secrets to life is to marry up. So they said, what the hell is marry up? And he says, what you've got to do is you've got to look and search and search and find somebody who's prepared to marry down. <laughs> As the birds up in the trees, oh. 